I am sick and goddamn tired of hearing about where people fall on the Dawkins scale. Before I go any further, I should say I'm a big fan of Dawkins, and I admire his non-sexist parts. He's kind of like the Benny Hill of atheism in that way. And what's more, I completely understand the rhetorical utility of his sliding scale of theistic probability. In the hands of a skilled debater like Dawkins, it's a valuable asset. But in the hands of many lay atheists, it's often a hell of a lot less than that. Now, for those who aren't familiar with the term, the Dawkins scale refers to a seven-point scale Dawkins proposed in The God Delusion. A one on this scale represents absolute certainty that God exists. A seven is absolute certainty that God doesn't exist. The point he's making with it is that atheists generally fall on the six and not the seven. This is a useful explanation of the fact that atheism is generally a product of doubt, not certainty. But certainty appeals to a lot of people, so when Dawkins talks about this publicly, there's often a backlash. People in the media stammer about how Dawkins is uncertain and concedes that there might be a god after all. They don't seem to understand that he's not actually conceding this in any way. They just see two guys in a debate where one is saying he's absolutely sure, and the other saying he holds a tentative position that's in accordance with the observable evidence. Somehow they don't see this as an idiot versus a responsible thinker, but rather they see a confident guy versus an indecisive guy. In the context of the book, and in the context of some debates, employing this scale makes perfect sense, but before we lean too heavily on it, we should probably point out that this scale can also be applied to any other belief. Does gravity exist? Well, I'm pretty damn sure it does, but as a responsible thinker, I've got to go with a six on the scale, because if convincing evidence arose to the contrary, I would change my mind. I'm not an immutable seven. We could, after all, be part of a computer simulation titled, What If There Was Gravity? So as a proper logician, I have to carve out a little tiny itsy-bitsy margin of error on the gravity thing. Same thing for evolution, right? I mean, just because the available data all suggests and confirms it, that doesn't mean I'm absolutely certain beyond the shadow of a doubt, irrespective of future data. I'd have to hold the responsible position of a six on the scale, but why hamstring oneself in a debate by pointing this out only with the respect of the thing that you're arguing about? I feel the same way every time I hear Dillahunty, or anybody else for that matter, talk about agnostic atheism versus Gnostic atheism. Before we start making this distinction, somebody show me one of these Gnostic atheists. Show me somebody who says that no matter what level of convincing evidence could be offered to the contrary, they would never believe in God. Show me somebody who says he would still be an atheist if God appeared in the sky before the whole world at once and said, I am God, sorry about all the mysteriousness and shit, and to prove my godness, you'll note that all the people who used to have cancer are now cured. Show me that guy, and then let's start carving atheism up into Gnostic versus agnostic. Now, this isn't just a semantic thing, and it's not just a trip you up in an argument thing, either. The use of these devices is actually fucking this movement up internally. I can't tell you how often I see atheists offering up false equivalency compromises based on this nonsense. Search Dawkins scale on Twitter, and it won't take long before you find some atheist saying something like, I'll admit that being a 7 on the Dawkins scale is as ridiculous as being a 1. What?! No the fuck it isn't. That's a complete misreading of the point of the rhetorical device. Keep in mind that on this scale, seven represents the thing that's right. One represents the thing that's wrong. The point of the Dawkins scale is to point out the flaw in absolute certainty, but if you're going to be absolutely certain of something, it's still way better to be certain about the thing that conforms to all the known evidence. Substitute anything else for the God assumption and it becomes painfully obvious. Somebody who is absolutely certain that the Earth is round should, for the proper employment of scientific thinking, concede that overwhelming evidence could sway him from a pedantic Vulcan, it's an oblate spheroid bitch point of view. But that doesn't mean that he's exactly as wrong as somebody who's convinced that the Earth is flat. There's a cat on my lap right now. If I was pressed, I'd admit that it could be a hallucination, it could be a robot, it could be a phantasm from another dimension taking the form of my cat. But if I say, no, damn it, this is definitely my cat, I may be technically wrong, but it's certainly not as wrong as, no, damn it, this is definitely a phantasm from another fucking dimension. The problem is that the seven-point scale and these binary choices like Gnostic or Agnostic don't leave you any room to express the true 6.999999-ness of your atheism. If God appeared before me right now and we had a 20-minute conversation, I'd assume I'd lost my fucking mind before I'd assume that it actually happened. It'd take a hell of a lot more than a personal experience to overturn my conviction. I'd need tangible evidence that could be verified by multiple sources, and in addition, I'd need volumes of refutations for the hundreds of logical contradictions that God's existence entails. I'd need world-overturning amounts of evidence. I'd need amounts of evidence that one can reasonably assume will never exist. So as to where I fall on the Dawkins scale, it ultimately comes down to the question of how many nines you can put after the decimal place before you run out of nines.